It is now January the 11th. We've just got back from New Year's holiday and I've just learned that my darling wife, Nadia, is going to come and join me for a holiday for Easter. Uh, apparently Australia's gone into lockdown now, so if the Australians lift the international border lockdown, uh, then she's going to come and join me on the 31st of, uh, of March. Um, which means that I've got a lot of work. Let me just show you. Right, so I have reams and reams and reams of jobs that I need to um, I need to work through. Now what I've done is I've, I've gone through, I don't know if you can see this, but I've gone through and I've put in the job itself, what needs to be done, so the fiberglassing of the holes, and then I've broken it down into all the little tasks that I need to do to achieve those jobs, to achieve that task. Um, and then I've put estimated days in there of how long each task is going to take me. Then I've got my port and my starboard, and basically I've totaled up the um, I've totaled up the um, the days and that's what I've come to. So basically I've worked through every single job that I need to do on this boat. Uh, that's what I did over the Christmas period. What I've now got is I've got some kind of game plan. So I've got how long it's going to take me. So bearing in mind that Nadia is going to come on the 31st of March, that only gives me, that only gives me like sort of eight or nine working weeks. So breaking that down into days, five days uh, a week. Uh, so I, I need to identify which are the important tasks on here. That is the challenge that we, we, we need to achieve. So I'm going to need a lot of support from you guys. Uh, moral support, because <laughs> I know it's going to get on my nerves at some point in time. Um, so I want you to keep me going, keep the pressure on me, um, keep my spirits up. Um, yesterday I came here even though the boatyard was closed. Yeah, it's very early January and um, the boat yard is closed, but I came, I didn't know it was holiday. So I've walked here and I've thought, you know what, I'm just going to work anyway. It's very quiet, there's nobody here and um, it feels good. So what I've been thinking of doing whilst I've been on holiday is how I'm going to tackle the port hull. Three or four inches off the defect here, there's the defect right there and I'm going to go three or four inches down here as well. So I'm going to follow that defect all the way along and I'm going to do that with every single defect all the way through the porthole. So we're going to come up like this. And basically this outline here uh, is roughly my grinding spot. So I'm going to grind all of this away here and then I'm going to um, re fiberglass this section. Let me draw it for you. This is, say this is a cross section through the hull. Okay, so the hull is is roughly 15 millimeters thick. So where we've got the crunch in our, in our, this is the, the defect here, is this section here. So what I'm planning to do is we've put our marks here and here. This is the this is the face side, so that's the exterior. This is the interior. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind down like this and then back up here like that. I'm going to drill a hole through here, like a just through this section here. Bang, bang, every sort of like four inches or so, I'm going to drill a hole just so I can trace it on the outside because once obviously once I've done the inside I've got to go on the outside and do the inside outside so and then I'm going to grind away after I've drilled this hole here so then I'll put lay fiberglass in here in a series of fiberglass like this and build that whole section back up again so get rid of that 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 weak spot then on the exterior because I've I've traced this defect all the way along with holes I'll be able to join those dots on the outside 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the same on the outside. So I'm going to come three inches, three inches back either side, and then I'm going to grind away the exterior. And then I'm going to lay again, new fiberglass again on there. So what we've created is almost like a, a key. So in effect, this is what we've created. We've created a key of fiberglass that's going to look something like that. This is the new fiberglass. Oh, sorry, my hand. I'm concentrating on my drawing, not my camera. That's not very good. So this is my new fiberglass. Again, this is the inside face. Sorry, the outside face exterior and so we've created a key so any pressure that is, is coming this way can't push that out and any pressure coming from this way or any forces coming from this way can't push that key out there so it's almost dovetailed in and that's what we're looking for we're looking for to to get the strength back in the structure uh, once i've done that section i'm gonna then lay sheet of fiberglass over the entire key which is going to come basically from about here all the way down to here now we're on the outside and I'm going to trace my lines in now so I can see here my series of holes so this is where my defect is uh, which is kind of cool now so if I join these dots up we have now a very simple understanding of the issues that we have so it's crunched right down through that side which is good because it's all localized and then the next task will be to do the other side which i believe is here we go so we got this going on like holes in my holes um so my next job now next task is to get my um get my keels in the correct positions and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to uh, make up some stilts so I've cut my stilts to length here here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cr create a stilt like this and I'm going to fix that down to this timber here and that I'm going to then use some folding wedges like so, so you can see the attachment on the other side, that's going to support the keel and I've got folding wedges there so I can drive it up you know, 10 or 15 mil, which it probably needs to um, alter the angle of the keel and get the keel just as it should be, uh, dead straight. I did some research last night because I wasn't sure whether the, the keel is actually sat at a camber either inwards or outwards I was quite 100% I'm gonna check another Keely in fact let's go and have a check now it's obviously needs fixing up but they look to be if you have a look the keels on that look to be tilting in slightly although I'm not 200% sure um, no they look dead vertical to me really difficult with the blocks in the way but they look they look dead centre to me, like vertical, sorry, not dead centre. Let's have a look at this one. Yeah, they don't look to be cambering out. It's really difficult to see, but they look very vertical. So I'm going to set, I'm going to set my keels dead vertical. I'm going to create my stilts and they're going to support it from the underside and also give me uh, movement uh, la side to side laterally. That's lateral. Right, okay, so there we go. There's no fixings. It's simply going to be on this block here, pushing this keel up into here, holding that more or less.
less perpendicular, I can use this as a straight edge and get that dead straight. So anyway, let me show you what I've done. So I've outlined everything, I've drilled everything, I've undone the through holes on, I've undone the, the fixings on the through holes for the transducers. But I've been inspecting the area around there. It looks like I might be able to sand around it, grind around it. If not, I'll just have to take them out later. But I'm leaving them in situ for now. I'm half-hearted about it. I've cleaned up this area. I've taken out a few, few through holes. So I've got this out, that one out over there, that one out in there, that one out there, and they were all to do with the um, the shower, toilet, and sink. So not required in this area. They're going to be down that end. Timbers now for the uh, floor braces that go across there. So I'm going to pick those up, I've got the timbers up there now, so I can cross brace this properly, which is great news. Um, I've sorted out the, some electrics, um, and that's about it. That's all I've got time for, all I've got energy for today. Oh, wow, it's been a long day. And I did some uh, prep work down there so and this morning i've gone out and i've bought myself some kind of wet and dry vacuum which is going to act as a, a miniature dust extractor if you like i'm going to start grinding out the hole down there and then i'm going to start laying fiberglass so the the first task is to get the holes watertight so i've got to work on the port get the port all sorted out the port side um, move everything from the starboard side over to the port side once completed so I've got to deck the port out as well. I'm going to lay new floors, got to do everything. I'm going to put new cross beams in, got to sort out all the, all the um, fiberglass defects. Um, so yeah, I've got to do all of that. Then I've got to shift everything out the starboard, which can take me a day, over to the port side, fill the port side up, and then I've got to start on the starboard side. I've estimated that it's going to take me 25 days to do all of that which is five weeks so five weeks is going to take but it's mid it's coming up for mid january now so five weeks is going to be the end of feb so that's going to be watertight holes end of feb that's going to give me four more weeks four more weeks uh, or still 20 days um what i'd like to do is i would like to get get this roof um attached to the um attached to the to the bodywork so that's another job that's going to take uh, a few days. So I think I don't know what I've got down for that. Then I've got to rebuild my rudders. And then I've got to put the engines in. So not a lot of time to do a lot of work. The the, the whole premise of this next um, the next part of this series um, is we're going to get this boat in the water and we need to get it in the water by before the thirty first of March. I need to test it. 
I need to run the engines and then I've got a two day sail over to Florida to go and pick Nadia up. Now it's a tall order, but that's the challenge. That's the challenge. That's where we're at. And I want you to sort of, uh, I want you to help me in this and I want you to keep me going. I want you to keep on, give me, give me the pressure. Give me the, tell me what I need to be doing next. Tell me if I'm going wrong. Tell me if I'm running out of time, but be positive about it. Give me some feedback, but make it positive feedback. Okay. Um, so it's down to you guys to keep me going. You're my Duracell batteries and I'm just the, the little bunny running around. Mm -hmm.